So the first question we have is, is the stock market going to crash this year? Okay, that's a good question, actually. It came in earlier this week. Uh, you know, we've had a lot of volatility uh, in this month, um, and market's down maybe 5% from its high, uh, you know, in May here. So, you know, people start to wonder about what's going to be happening. And, of course, if you look at the popular press, there's almost always, um, almost every day, there's somebody writing an article about the stock market crash that's coming. Uh, those are very popular articles. They get a lot of, you know, views, which is why people keep putting them out. You know, there's a there's a negative bias uh, that seems to work quite well, unfortunately. In my daily uh, video updates that I do every day, I do try to highlight some of the positive things that are happening just to kind of offset some of the negative. So, you know, that's kind of important too. Uh, so we'll focus on a few things, but um, let me show you kind of my thoughts on what we're seeing, you know, with the market and, you know, why I think this year could be safe from a, a big downturn as far as that goes. But first, let's just define what a downturn is. I and mean, when you say crash, so let me share my screen here. Okay, so this is a chart here uh, of the last 25 years for the S&P 500. And you can see, you know, we had this big downturn here in 2000, a little over 40% drop uh, for the S&P 500. And then, of course, the 2008 downturn that we're all familiar with, you know, over 50% drop for the S&P 500. Um, we had a little one here in 2018, almost 20%, didn't last long. Uh, and then, of course, we have the big pandemic drop here, which was 35%. That's the fastest 35% down market in history. Uh, and you can see, actually, we recovered from that quite quickly also. So the first thing to talk about is just what is a crash. So I would say a crash is something in that 25% or higher range. Uh, and anything less than that is pretty common. You can see how many little downturns we had here and here and here. And, you know, even like I said, right now, we're down 5% from the high, you know, that we were at uh, earlier this month. So, uh, you know, kind of that 5, 10, 15%. Uh, that can happen, and I expect that to happen. And so you really want to have your portfolio uh, placed in the right risk level so you can handle those types of fluctuations because there's those are pretty common. That's what happens all the time. So, you know, what we'll just focus on the word crash, and I'll call that a 25% or higher, uh, you know, event like this. And so what would be, you know, the criteria that would kind of precipitate that type of downturn? And one of the things that I tell myself all the time, just from my own studies, is that a big crash in the stock market has two components. Number one, obviously the stock market going down, but number two is the economy going down, especially the leading indicators. So let me see, I opened up uh, the leading indicators uh, piece here. Let me find it real quickly. Yeah, so this is, there's a thing called the Conference Board, which is a group that does uh, some of the reporting on all kinds of different indicators. And this is a basket called the LEI, it stands for Leading Economic Indicator. Uh, and, and there's 10 pieces in here, including the S&P 500, but it's you know manufacturing demand, uh, initial unemployment claims. And these are uh, indicators that they've chosen that they feel lead the economy. And so if you, this goes all the way back to the 1960s, which is kind of incredible. And you can see, you know, all these little gray spots were, were recessions. And so you can see that this leading indicator, you know, peaked out oftentimes just before these gray lines. Pretty good predictor of an upcoming recession. So when the leading economic indicator starts to go down and the stock market starts to go down, that is a sign that we could be in for something that might be in that kind of 25% or higher downturn. So if you see here, you know, here was the, just before the 2000 downturn, it peaked out. And this was back in 2006, it peaked out again before the 2008 uh, downturn. So these are things that I'm looking at. Now, one thing that's kind of fascinating here is this. So we had this you know, big drop uh, for that shutdown for last year's shutdown. And then look at how fast things have come back. And, and, and this is really important to understand. <clears throat> so number one, this uh, downturn that we just had for the pandemic, the leading indicators were still going up. So it didn't help us to know because it was a, not an economic event. It was a health event that created an economic event. 
So, uh, you know, assuming we don't have another one of those anytime soon, which I'd be very surprised to see another full shutdown, even if the variants kind of jumped out a little bit. Um, I think that that, you know, is the only situation where I've seen where the economy and the stock market together uh, don't go together. So, <clears throat> so look at where it's doing right now. So they just reported it was up 1.6% higher than last month, which is a giant jump for this indicator. It's up 17% more than last year, which is a tremendous jump uh, for a one year period. Anytime you had the leading indicators jump by 7% or more historically, uh, I think 82% of the time that that happened, you ended up with the S&P 500 uh, at 6%, sorry, 8% higher than it was prior to that. So if you look at this really closely, how many times have you seen big drops where the leading in indicators are going down? I, I haven't seen any uh, except for, uh, sorry, they're going up. The only time I've seen it go up and the market go down was during the pandemic. So barring a pandemic, uh, you know, these indicators are going up tremendously. Uh, so really, really amazing time right now. So are we going to have a crash this year? It would be the, one of the most unusual crashes in history uh, as far as that goes, because the indicators here are going up so strongly. And the other thing, and, and generally what ends up slowing down the economy is the federal uh, funds rate. So the Fed sets rates and they basically come in and they say, OK, here's the current rate. And so you can see prior to the 2000 downturn, it went from about four and three quarters all the way up to six and a half. And we end up with the 2000 downturn. And then we went from one, you know, percent roughly all the way up to five and a quarter. And we had the 2008 downturn. And then we had this big upturn. This actually led to uh, some of the downturn that happened at the end of 2018, that little 20 percent one we looked at. But now we're at zero. So, again, going back through time, when you see rates at zero, it's very difficult for the market to fall apart. Uh, the big component that's happening right now is just the fact that people are feeling like they're going to have to raise rates sooner than they said they would. So, you know, that's the issue that's happening in terms of inflation and those types of things. So, again, looking at kind of what's happening here, I have a hard time imagining a big giant downturn. However, I'll show you one piece here. Let me sign in real quickly. This is uh, sort of a uh, fascinating area to look at within inside the market because there are some pieces where the market is actually you know having some trouble here uh and um let me get this up. there we go so this is what's called the nine boxes and so this is today right now as it's live uh, and you can see here the value stocks are doing better today right uh and some of the large growth has slowed down a bit today uh, and so these, you know, pieces are really important. But if you go back for the three months, you can see actually there has been a pretty significant market downturn on this growth side, especially this kind of smaller growth piece. So I, I, I will say that there is something a little different about this particular market that you have to be careful with. And that's just that you could have a quasi crash for a piece of the market. Uh, this is the portion here, this column that did so well last year that is struggling so far this year. So uh, that aspect of it, I think, is kind of important to understand. You probably want to be uh, leaning more towards the value side of the equation uh, because as interest rates come up and as the economy reopens, uh, these stocks theoretically have a better chance of you know, avoiding some of the downturns if it, if it does happen. Uh, then you might see in some of these growth stocks here as far as that goes. So, uh, you know, anyway, so that's that's the answer to that. 